wonderful, wonderful day, day I will never forget. After I wandered in darkness away, Jesus my Savior I met. Oh, what a tender, compassionate friend, He met the need of my say good evening to each and every one out there this evening. It's great to be able to come into your home tonight and sing some of these old songs about heaven. If you're out there tonight and have a prayer request or song request, why well, call in and there'll be somebody in there on the phone to take care of you this evening. So while we're here and, and while you're there, while you get your guitars out and sharpen them up and sing these old songs with us this evening. We're going to do all these old songs we've did so many, many times, and we haven't got tired of them yet. The next one I have is, I won't have to cross Jordan alone. When I come to the river at ending of day, when the last winds of sorrow have blown, there'll be somebody waiting to show. Jordan alone. I won't have to cross Jordan alone. Jesus died 
Isn't that a great thought? I won't have to cross Jordan alone. Wanda, won't you lead us in a word of prayer? Dear, kind, gracious Heavenly Father, it's an honor and a privilege, Lord, to come this day, Lord, and Father, that we could bring out the songs in a blessing to someone else, Heavenly Father. Now, Lord, we're nothing but you're all, and you're all, all in all. So we ask for your presence among us this evening, Heavenly Father, and if there's one listening in that has no hope, oh, Father, I pray they'll seek you out right now. Father, may you move by your Holy Spirit. May your will be accomplished and done. May we be pleasing to you. Father, if we've said, done, or thought anything, Lord, that displeases you, please forgive us, move it far from us. And Lord, help us to be your obedient servants. And may you move upon us this evening in a mighty and special way. Be with all the sick, the shut-in. Be with our soldiers wherever they're at, Heavenly Father. Lord, keep your hand up on them, God. And Father, we just pray, Father, that people will look to you for the answer for their problems this day. Please take this service into your care and into your keeping. And your word, may you bring it forth, Lord. May we rejoice and open up our hearts to receive it with gladness. Help us this evening, Lord. We need you greatly. In the precious name of Jesus, our Savior, we ask. Amen. Amen. We'd like to bring the program out to those who have lost their loved ones here in the last few weeks and all those in the hospitals this evening and pray for our country and the yes. problem we're having right today. And You know, it's a mighty scary thing sometimes to think about this, but you know our God is able. So put your trust and faith in God and I'm sure everything will be okay. We'd like to bring our program out to also those in the rest homes this evening and, and those who just can't get out anymore. And we just hope that we have something, Lord, and that would sink deep into your soul this night. We have another song that's really great and we'd like to sing it. As, and I'm sure you guys all know it out there. Sunset is coming, but the sunrise we'll see. He'll come for Jesus in a lowland of sin. Hoping that we at last the life crown may win, serving the master through the morning are we. Sunset is coming, but the sunrise will see. Sunset is coming, but the sunrise will see. Heavenly beauty makes the shadows to flee. Isn't that a great old song, Sunset is Coming? I have another old song that's been here a long, long time, and we sang it many, many times, and we never get tired of the old rugged cross. Mm -hmm. 
It's been requested many, many times. It's just a good old song. On a song for the choir to do and this is one that's uh, been an invitation song for many years is, is Jesus is calling him we had a request for walk around the bedside and I think you guys do that don't you I think that other one's strolling to heaven you want to take that one here yeah. <clears throat> Jesus is tenderly calling the old calling to
What do you say we do this little light for the little people here tonight? It's, All right. it's in the book if you want to find it. Sure. So gather around them little people around the television and help them sing this little light of mine. And You know, they always love to sing this old song. And it's just great to have the little people to be a part of a program here tonight. And here we go, this little light of mine. It's the light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This the light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This the light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Hiding under a bushel, no. chords of the old rugged the old time religion. Go ahead. You fellas remember that, don't you? <laughs> okay. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion and it's good enough for me. Makes us good for our fathers. It was good. Still do the old time religion. That's the only way. You gonna do something for us? I ain't got no guitar. <laughs> Bring him back on. <clears throat> Helen, you said you was gonna help me sing this. One. Huh? You said you'd help me sing this. Uh, You gonna help me sing? Mm -mm. <laughs> Didn't practice, huh? How long has it been since you talked with the Lord and told him your heart hidden secret? How long have you prayed? How long? And you stay on your knees till the light shine through. How long has it been since your mind felt at ease? 
How long since your heart knew no burden? Can you call him your friend? How long has it been since you knew that he cared for you? How long has it been since you knelt by your bed and prayed to the Lord up in heaven? How long since you knew that he'd answer you and would keep you on And long has it been since you woke with the dawn and felt that the day worth the living can you call him your friend? How long has it been since you knew that he cared for you? Get this book out of your way. Keep it. <laughs> I'd like to send this out to Dawn and Sylvia Dean. I'm not on an ego trip. I'm nothing on my own. I make mistakes. I often slip. Just come and flesh and time we were here for 
the apple tree song, and we'll try and do it here tonight. I've heard a lot of preachers preaching about people like you and me, how they compare us to apples hanging on a tree. They say some are ripe for picking, ah, but others are too green. But I thank God for the man of God who stand there and shake the tree. He standing stand in, in the middle of the orchard of life and he's looking all around. Could it be that apples have fallen to the ground? He don't know if you're ready to pick or if you are to green. But one thing for sure, he'll stand there and shake the tree. Now the next time you see your preacher And he says, honey, are you safe? Tears swell up in your eyes As your heart begins to break One thing I am persuaded And I'm sure you plainly see It's just that old preacher man A shaking your tree He's standing in the middle of the orchard of life and he's looking all around. Could it be that apples have fallen to the ground? He don't know if you're ready to pick or if you are to green. But one thing for sure, he'll stand there and shake the tree. Now once I was like that apple, I was hanging from a tree. I was ripe for picking, ah, but no one could reach me. I said, I guess it's over, surely this is the end. Then my tree started shaking, it was that good old preacher man. He's standing in the middle of the horse of life and he's looking all around. Could it be that apples have fallen to the ground? He don't know if you're ready to pick or if you are to green. But one thing for sure, he'll stand there and shake the tree. I'm sure glad we got a lot of these young preachers that will stand there and shake the tree today. We got Tracy and her group, and I'm sure they'll have something special for you. We had some requests called in tonight. Um, not sure who called them in, but the first one we're going to do is, are you washed in the blood? <clears throat> Have you been to Jesus for his cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in his grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed?
also had a request for this old house. Not sure who that was for either. Don't know I'm going to leave Else he'd wake up by the fireplace He'd sit there howling green But my hunting days are over Ain't he going to run them coons no more Gabriel done brought in the chariot When the wind blew down the door Ain't going to need this house no longer Ain't going to need this house no more Ain't got time to fix the shingles Ain't got time to fix the floor Ain't got a sanctuary and we're going to send that out to uh, Robert Gibson. Thanksgiving. 
didn't they do great? Well, we've got time for a prayer request now, and, and, and you know, we've got a lot to pray about this evening, and um, you can have, a, for each and every one of you, you can have a part in this great program. Kathy Smith, Chuck um, Burnell, Rusty Hudson, Sr., Cat Channel, Teddy Wentz, Fanny Cornell, Gene Anderson, Lenny Evans for Salvation, Has Lewis, Llewellyn Maynard Hannafin, Ann Brown, Emma Zickafoos, Ernest, Ernest Gifford and the grandkids, and Jim, and, and Steve Gifford, and Daryl Marie, and I'm sure there's many others out there tonight in leader prayer this evening, and, and be with our nation as we have this problem tonight, and our leaders in our country, and especially our, our president, and how much problem he's had ever since he's been in there, and how he's, we thank God how he stood up with it. Our Lord and our God, as we're here tonight, as a Father, we know, Lord, we're very small in your sight, and we're here tonight, Lord, we know, Father, you're still in control, O oh God. Even though we see the world in chaos, O oh Father, we know, Lord, that you're still in control. And we're here tonight, Father, and all these names that come before you this evening, Lord, you know what the need is of each and every one. And you know the needs, Father, of those that lost their loved ones, Father. And Father, the heartache and the sorrow, Lord, and but, Lord, we know that there's a better place, Father, for those that know Jesus Christ and got them in their heart, O oh Lord. And we thank you for that great promise tonight. And, Lord, as we're here tonight, we pray, Father, that you can give people uh, the faith they need, Lord. And may they just put their faith and trust in you, O oh God. And we know, Father, that you're the one that can take care of any little thing that there is. And, as we look back through the Bible and see the great things you've done down through the years, oh God. And Father, we know that this is just a small thing for you. Now be with us and be with our leaders, Lord, and help us so we might do your will. And as Tim comes to bring the message here tonight, oh God, may you just bless him and give him what he's needed this night, Father, and may it sink deep into the heart of those that's seeding him. For there's one out there tonight, Lord, that don't know you as Lord and Savior. If they've tried everything else, oh God, and don't know which way to turn, we pray, oh Lord, that they'll be thinking about you. We give you all the praise in Jesus' name and amen. amen. Come on, Tim. All right. Well, they had a, a quite a few songs left to sing, I think. They didn't get them uh, all done. And Ernest, I'm sorry about uh, not getting your list finished up, but uh, we appreciate everyone that watches and just uh, hope that uh, you enjoy the program and that... Uh, God has touched you through something that's said and done here. And you know, uh, this evening I want to uh, speak about uh, uh, the crucifixion and uh, just the joy that we have in knowing that uh, Christ's sacrifice covered a multitude of sins, and in that was mine. And so, uh, though my sins be scarlet, I can be white as snow, so... If you have your Bibles this evening, we'd ask you to open them to the 23rd chapter of St. Luke, and uh, we'll read there starting at verse 46. 23rd chapter, verse 46. The Bible says, And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. And when the centurion saw what was done, he glorified God, saying, Certainly this was a righteous man. And all the people that came together to that sight, beholding the things that were done, smoked their breast and returned. And all their acquaintance and the women which followed him from Galilee stood afar off and beholding these things. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your word, and we thank you for that great sacrifice in your own Son, 
Jesus, Lord. And we just ask this evening, Lord, that if there would be one that uh, listening that has never made that commitment, Lord, to accept you as Lord and Savior, Lord, that your spirit might draw them this very hour, that they might give their heart to Jesus Christ. And Lord, we just thank you for your word and ask that your word would go out tonight, Lord, and that you just remove me from here and that your word would speak loudly. And we thank you for this in Jesus' name, amen. You know, uh, a lot of things change this day, and you think about uh, the six hours uh, that uh, Christ had uh, hung on the cross, and that we know the last three was total darkness, and uh, as the trial had taken place since early that morning, we know that the uh, crowd was brought in and that they were... Uh, uh, convinced to tell him to crucify him, crucify him. But here we see in this uh, last part of this that they uh, smoked their breath and they uh, uh, were sorrowful that he had had to uh, give his life uh, and that they recognized maybe there was something different about this one. And you know what? Uh, uh, Chuck Swindoll tells this story about uh, uh, in a subway that uh, uh, it was in Washington, D.C., and in a subway, they had contacted Joshua Bell, who I uh, never heard of, but he's one of the greatest uh, players of the violin, and he plays classical music, and they said his... Uh, uh, violin was one that uh, is the finest that hands have made, that it was made in the 1700s, and that uh, he plays some of the greatest uh, music that was ever composed. And they got uh, Joshua Bell to go in to uh, the subway there uh, at Washington, and he set up, and they set a camera on him, and he just uh, wore an old uh, ball cap and a sweatshirt and went in and sat down and started playing some of the finest violin music that could be played. And they said during the time that the camera was set up, there was over 1,100 people that passed by this great uh, person that was playing the violin but there was only seven out of the 1,100 that even stopped to listen to him play. There was, they said there was uh, 27 that tossed money in his case as they walked by, but they didn't stop. And he got a grand total of over $32 for 45 minutes of playing. And they said that the only thing about that was that the night before, he had filled the Boston uh, uh, Symphica Hall and that his usual performance averaged over $1,000 for every minute that he played. But yet, over 1,100 people passed by and could have stopped and listened to him play free of charge but they kept right on going. Why? Because they had an agenda set up. They had to be somewhere. They passed by, and maybe they weren't in a hurry, but they never took recognition of really who this was. And you know, this is a perfect picture. You think about the six hours on the cross. The first three was daylight, and it said they mocked him and made fun of him. They treated him like he was a nobody. That he was worse than one of the thieves because he had told that he was one that could come down off the cross. Why wouldn't he do that? They had no idea that he was standing in the presence of God. And tonight I can tell you that here the last three hours of uh, when he hung on the cross, he spoke this, and one of the greatest things that he spoke was, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. 
And you know how true that is, that right here, they had changed from a crowd that had uh, been yelling, crucify him, crucify him, because there had been the ground shaking. Darkness came upon the earth. The veil was rent, and I'm sure that the, uh, the word had gotten out that the centurion, you remember, he said, surely this man is the Son of God. And you think about that, that they said all the people that came together to that site, they began to smoke their breath. And you know that they were sorrowful. And you know why? Because their fear come upon them. And tonight, you know, I just sat and thought about uh, uh, the one passage. If you uh, want to turn with me over to the book of Acts. And I want to read uh, in the 26th chapter about a, a man uh, named Agrippa. And you know, Paul, which was one of the greatest uh, missionaries that uh, is told about there in the Bible, that he was brought before Agrippa and uh, he had brought because he had told about his testimony about how uh, Christ had struck him down and he brought into the city of Damascus and that he was uh, made to see again and that he accepted the Lord as Savior. And it said uh, that he was brought before King Agrippa and he said, Wherefore, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto this heavenly vision, but showed first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coast of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and do His work met for repentance. So first of all, he preached right there in Damascus where God had led him. And then it said he went into Jerusalem and Judea and then unto the Gentiles of all the things that they needed to do to meet for repentance. And for this cause, he said, the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me, having therefore obtained the help of God, I continue unto this day, witnessing both the small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come, that Christ should suffer, and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead and sh should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. And as he thus spoke for himself, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself, much learning has made thee mad. And he said, I'm not mad, most noble Festus, but speak forth the words of truth and soberness. For the king knoweth that these things before whom also I speak freely. For I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him. For this thing was not done in a corner. He called a grip out here. He said that you know these things were done. And you know what was going on, just like the people that stood on uh, the side of the cross and seen the darkness come upon and felt the ground shake. And then they was in the city when Christ was said to have arose and that he was seen of over 500 people of one time. And for 40 days, he walked around uh, in the city. But yet, it doesn't say that all the city was saved. It doesn't say the majority of the city was saved, but it said they left there, the people that was on the site beating their chest. They were sorry, sure. But did they receive Christ as the Lord and Savior? Did they seek Him? Agrippa here knew exactly what Paul was talking about. He knew the law. He was brought up in it. And he said, King Agrippa, believeth thou the prophets? And then he says, I know that thou believeth. Then Agrippa said to Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to become a Christian.
Christian. And Paul said, I would to God that not only thou, but that all that hear me this day were both almost and all together such as I and would accept, accept these bonds. And when he had thus spoken, the king rose up and the governor and Bernice and they that sat with them. And when they had gone aside, they talked between themselves saying, this man has done nothing worthy of death. Then said Agrippa unto Festus, This man might have been set at liberty if he had not appealed unto Caesar. But nowhere in there does it say he fell on his knees and he cried out for mercy. And I can tell you there's a lot of people that believe there is a God, but they have never come under conviction to fall on their knees. They have never humbled themselves to a position to ask Christ to come into their heart and live. And they want to make him king of kings and lord of lord of their life. And they go about day by day knowing what the Bible says, but yet putting it in the back burner and thinking there's time. And that's what old Satan will tell you that there's time, another day, you'll do it. But it never talks about King Agrippa, and I'm not going to turn back, but you can go back to old Nebuchadnezzar in the book of Daniel, I think the fourth chapter. You know, it says that he come out and he looked out all of great Babylon, and he said, man, look at Babylon, how great it is, what I have made. And it says the very hour that his... Pride rose up in him that God caused him to go out and eat with the animals. And it says that hair come upon him like feathers on a bird. And you think about that. Here is a king, a great king, but he is caused to go into a mental state where he went out and ate grass with the cattle. And he did it for a term of time, but it says... And it tells in the Bible that he had mercy. God had mercy upon him. And he gave him the mind to repent. And it said that he gave God the praise for all things and recognized him as the God of Daniel and realized in his heart and changed it. And I can tell you, Nebuchadnezzar lives today because he accepted the God of Daniel. But it doesn't say that about old Festus and Agrippa. Why? Because I don't think they did. Maybe they did, and I pray that they did, and I pray tonight that you have. But unless you came to the point that you humbled yourself, bowed down and asked Christ, it's nothing that we've done of ourselves, but it's what Christ did, what I read on the cross. It said that he gave up the ghost. He didn't, they didn't take it from him. He gave his body as a living sacrifice that you and I might have, uh, be, that we might be justified before God, that we might be redeemed back to God tonight. I can tell you that it's only by God's grace that any of us are saved. But oh, the grace that covers a multitude of sin. Tonight, I hope you have experienced that grace that old Nebuchadnezzar came to his senses and turned to. That old Paul had mercy given to him there on the road to Damascus. You know, he could have been struck down and died. But God said he is a chosen vessel. And we see in the Bible where he went and preached the gospel to not only kings and their kingdoms, but even to the Gentiles where he said he went even to Damascus and Judea and uh, Jerusalem. I can tell you, he preached Jesus Christ and him crucified. And we preach the same tonight. God loves you if you... Do not know Christ as your Lord and Savior. I would tell you to fall on your knees, 
confess with the mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead and thou shalt be saved. And then you need to call someone and tell them that you've accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. God loves you. Good night.